a birthday later for indira priyadarshini on her 13th birthday central prison naini october 26 1930 on your birthday you have been in the habit of receiving presents and good wishes good wishes you will still have in full measure but what present can i send to you from naini prison my presents cannot be very material or solid they can only be of the air and of the mind and spirit such as a good fairy might have bestowed on you things that even the high walls of prison cannot stop you know sweetheart how i dislike sermonizing and doling out good advice when i am tempted to do this i always think of the story of a very wise man i once read perhaps one day you will yourself read the book which contains this story 1300 years ago there came a great traveler from china to india in search of wisdom and knowledge his name was wen sang and over the desert and mountains of the north he came braving many dangers facing and overcoming many obstacles so great was his thirst for knowledge and he spent many years in india learning himself and teaching others especially at the great university of nalanda which existed then near the city that used to be called patliputra and is now known as patna when sang became very learned himself and is now known as patna when sang became very learned himself and he was given the title of master of the law the law of buddha and he journeyed all over india and saw and studied the people that lived in the great country in those far off days later he wrote a book of his travels and it is this book which contains the story that comes to my mind it is about a man from south india who came to kar karnasuvarna which was a city somewhere near modern bhagalpur in bihar and this man it is written it is written wore round his waist copper plates and on his head he carried a lighted torch a staff in hand with proud bearing and lofty steps he wandered about in this strange attire and when any one asked him the reason for his curious get up he told him that his wisdom was so great that he was afraid his belly would burst if he did not wear copper plates round it and because he was mobbed with pity for the ignorant people round about him who lived in darkness he carried the light on his head well i am quite sure that there is no danger of my ever bursting with too much wisdom and so there is no need for me to wear copper plates or armor and in my in it and in any event i hope that my wisdom such of it as i possess does not live in my belly where ever it may reside there is plenty of room still for more of it and there is no chance 
of there being no room left. If I am so limited in wisdom, how can I pose as a wise man and distribute good advice to others? And so I have always thought that the best way to find out what is right and what is not right, what should be done and what should not be done is not be giving a sermon but by talking and discussing and out of discussion sometimes a little bit of the truth comes out. I have liked my talks with you and we have discussed many things but the world is wide and beyond our world lie other wonderful and mysterious words so none of us need ever be bored or imagine like the very foolish and conceited person whose story Feng Sang has told us that we have learned everything worth learning and become very wise and perhaps it is uh, as well that we do not become very wise for the very wise if any such there are must sometimes feel rather sad that there is nothing more to learn they must miss the joy of discovery and of learning new things the great adventure that all of us who care to may have I must not therefore sermonize but what I am but what am I to do them then a letter can hardly take the place of walk at best it is a one-sided affair so if I say anything that sounds like good advice do not take it as if it were a bad pillow to swallow. Imagine that I have made a suggestion to you for you to think over as if we really were having a talk. In history, we read of great periods in the life of nations, of great men and women, women and great deeds performed. And sometimes in our dreams and rev reveries, we imagine ourselves back in those times and doing brave deeds like the heroes and heroines of old. Do you remember how fascinated you were when you first read the story of Jean Dark? Jean d'Arc and how your ambition was to do was to be something like her. Ordinary men and women are not usually heroic. They think of their daily bread and butter, of their children, of their household worries and the like. But a time comes when a whole people become full of faith for a great cause. And then even simple ordinary men and women become heroes and history becomes stirring and epoch making. Great leaders have something in them which inspires a whole people and makes them do great deeds. The year you were born in 1917 was one of the memorable years of history when a great leader with a heart full of love and sympathy for forgotten chapter of history in the very month in which you were born lenin started the great revolution which has changed the face of russia and siberia and today in india another great leader also full of love for all who suffer and pass passionately eager to help them has inspired our people to great endeavor and noble sacrifice so that they may again be free 
and the starving and the poor and the oppressed may have their burdens removed from them bapu ji yani mahatma gandhi lies in prison but the magic of the message steals into the hearts of india's millions and men and women and even little children come out of their little cells and become india's soldiers of freedom in india today we are making history and you and uh, i are fortunate to see this happening before our eyes and to take some parts ourselves in this great drama how shall we bear ourselves in this great moment great moment what part shall we play in it i cannot say what part will fall to our lot but whatever it may be let us remember that we can do nothing which may bring discredit to our cause or dishonor to our people if we are to be india's soldiers we have india's honor in our keeping and that honor is a sacred trust often we may be in doubt as to what to do it is no easy matter to decide what is right and what is not one little test i shall ask you to apply whenever you are in doubt it may help you never do anything in secret or anything that you would wish to hide for the desire to hide anything means that you are afraid and fear is a bad thing and unworthy of you be brave and all the rest follows if you are brave you will not fear and will not do anything of which you are ashamed you know that in our great freedom movement under bapu ji's leadership there is no room for secrecy or hiding we have nothing to hide we are not afraid of what we do and what we say we walk in the sun and in the light even so in our private lives let us make friends with the sun and walk in the light and do nothing secretly or furtively privacy of course we may have and should have but that is very different things from secrecy and if you do so my dear you will grow up a child of the light unafraid and secret and unruffled whatever may happen i have written a very long letter to you and you and that there is so much i would like to tell you how can a letter contain it you are fortunate i have said in being a witness to this great struggle for freedom that is going on in our country you are also very fortunate in having a very brave and wonderful little woman for your mommy and if you are ever in doubt or in trouble you cannot have a better friend goodbye little one and may you grow up into a brave soldier in india's service with all my love and good wishes a new year's gift new year's day 1931 Do you remember the letters I wrote to you more than 2 years ago when you were at Masuri and I was at Allahabad you liked them 
you told me then and i have often wondered if i should not continue that series and try to tell you something more about this world of arts but i have hesitated to do so it is very interesting to think of the past story of the world and of the great men and women and of the great deeds that it contains to read history is good but even more interesting and fascinating is to help in making history and you know that history is being made in our country today the past of india is a long long one lost in the mist of antiquity antiquity it has its sad and unhappy periods which make us feel ashamed and miserable but on the whole it is a splendid vast of which we may well be proud and think with pleasure and that today we have little leisure to think of the past it is the future that fills our minds the future that we are fascinating and the present that absorbs all our time and energy i have had time enough here in any prison to read or write what i wanted to but my mind wanders and i think of the great struggle that is going on outside of what others are doing and what i would do if i were with them i am too full i am too full of the present and the future to think of the past and at i have felt that this was wrong of me when i cannot take part in the work outside why should i worry but the real reason shall i wish for it to you why i put off writing was another one i am beginning to doubt if i know enough to teach you you are growing up so fast and becoming such a wise little person that all that i learned at school and college and afterwards may not be enough for you and at any rate may be rather still after some time it may be that you will take up and role of teacher and teach me many new things as i told you in the letter i wrote to you on your last birthday i am not at all like the very wise man who went about with copper plates round about him so that he might not burst with excess of learning when you were at masuri it was easy enough for me to write about the early days of the war for the knowledge that we have of those days is vague and indefinite but as we come out of those very ancient times history gradually begins and man begins his curious career in various part of the world and to follow man in their this career sometimes wise more often mad and foolish it no easy matter with the help of books one might make an attempt but nanny prison does not provide a library so i am afraid it is not possible for me to give you any connected account of world history much as i would i should have liked to have done so i dislike very much boys and girls learning the history of just one country and that too very often through 
लर्निंग बाई हार्ट सम डेट्स एंड अ फ्यू फैक्ट्स बट हिस्ट्री इज वन कनेक्टेड होल एंड यू कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इवेन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ एनी वन कंट्री इफ यू डू नॉट नो वाट हैज हैपेंड इन अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आई होप दैट यू विल नॉट लर्न हिस्ट्री इन दिस नैरो वे confining it to one or two countries but will survey the whole world remember always that there is not to very much difference between various people as we seem to imagine maps and atlases so us countries in different colors undoubtedly people do differ from one another but they resemble each other also a great deal and it is well to keep this is mind and not be misled by the colors on the map or by national boundaries i cannot write for you the history of my choice you will have to go to other books for it but i shall write to you from time to time something about the past and about the people who lived in the days gone by and who played a big part on the world's stage i do not know if my letters will interest you or awaken your curiosity indeed i do not know when you will see them or if you will see them at all stands that we should be so near and at so far away in masuri you were several hundred miles away from me that i could write to you as often as i wished and run up to you when the desire to see you became strong but here we are on either side of the jamuna river not far from each other at the high walls of nani prison keep us effectively apart one letter a fortnight i may write and one letter a fortnight i may receive and once a fortnight i may have a 20 minute interview and at these restrictions are good we seldom value anything which we can get cheaply and i am beginning to believe that a period in prison is a very desirable part of one's education fortunately there are scores of thousands in our country who are having this course today i cannot say if you will like these letters when you see them but i have decided to write them for my own pleasure own pleasure they bring you very near to me and i feel almost that i have had a talk with you often enough i think of you but today you have hardly been absent from my mind today is new year's day and as i i lay in bed very early in the morning watching the stars i thought of the great year that was past with all its hope and anguish and joy and all the great and gallant deeds performed and i thought of bapu ji who has made our old country young and vigorous again by his magic touch sitting in his prison cell in ervada and i thought of dado indra grandfather pandit motilal nehru thought of dadu and many others and especially i thought of mummy and you later in the morning came the news that mummy had been arrested and taken to gol 
it was a pleasant news year gift for me it had long been expected and i have no doubt that mummy is throughoutly happy and contented but you must be rather lonely once a fortnight you may see mummy and once a fortnight you may see me and you will carry your messages to each other but i shall sit down with pen and paper and i shall think of you and then you will silently come near me and we shall talk of many things and we shall dream of the past and find a way to make the future greater than the past so on this new year's day let us resolve that by the time this year also grows old and dies we shall have brought this bright future dream of ours nearer to the present and given to india's past and signing page of history thanks